you done now? Broadcasting live from Houston, Texas, and around the world. And around the world. TV host, best-selling author, and radio personality, Brad Gilmore, brings you a collection of conversations with stars from movies. Mark Wahlberg. Hey, how are you? The legendary Mr. Christopher Lloyd. Christopher, how are we doing? I'm doing good. Great <laughs> introduction. Television. Jimmy Fallon joins us this morning. Jimmy, how you doing, my friend? Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate this, bud. Kelly Ripa. Brad, thank you for having me. Comedy. Jay Leno joins us. Jay, how you doing? Hey, Brad, what's going on? Gabriel Fluffy Iglesias. Good morning. Music. Lola Monroe. Thank you. Thank you for having me. The legendary frontman of ACDC, Brian Johnson, joins us right now. Brian, how you doing? Good morning, Brad. What looking at y'all give me funny lad. Grammy Award winner Maya joins us. How are you? And more. And more. This is, is the, the collection. collection. Now, now your host, host the, the boat, Brad Gilmore. Gilmore. And he joins us right now. We're talking about a seat at the table, which is going to go down May the 1st on the Grio Network, the Grio Television Network, thegrio.com. He is the one and only man, the one and only you can't clone, and that's Roy Wood Jr. on the line. Roy, how you doing? Yo, what the hell is going on, baby? What's <laughs> happening in Houston, man? Let me get one of them Von B. Trill burgers. Mail one up here to New York. Get a stay fresh. Man, have you had a Trill Burger yet? Have you had the experience of it? Oh, bro! Every time I see them on TV, they be doing them close shots on the on the on the on the patty, and the and the juice be running out and mixing with the cheese. I'm like, oh my god! Like, I, cause I'm 44 now. Food is porn. That's my porn. <laughs> I will tell you, man, it lives up to the hype. If you haven't had it. It lives up to the hype. It's going to be competing with the Whataburgers and the in and outs and all that. Bun B knows what he's doing, man. Okay. Okay. <laughs> love it. Love it, man. Hey, but, yo, we're talking about a seat at the table, which goes down May the 1st. Let the people know on the airwaves, what exactly is a seat at the table, and why should people be tuning into this? Yo, we're going to be on the Grio Network, which is Byron Allen's joint that he just bought. You know, it's black entertainment, a lot of black news, a lot of black culture on that channel. So Saturday night during White House Correspondence Dinner, uh, well, after the White House Correspondence Center, there's always a big party or two. And the griot throws going at the African-American Smithsonian, man. And so that party is where we're going to honor some of the best in black journalists. I'm going to get up and crack a few jokes. Diana Ross is going to perform. And we're going to condense all the best moments into a broadcast that are air um, in prime time on May 1st. Yeah, and, and the thing about it is, when you say you have so many names out here, I mean, I'm just going to throw out a couple. You've already said Byron Allen. You've said Diana Ross, Ebony K. Williams, April Ryan, Jim Acosta, Rashida Jones. Uh, the list kind of goes on and on and on. You say you're going to be cracking jokes. So are you are you kind of the MC? Or are you going to be moving the crowd? Or what's your role exactly? Oh, yeah, I'm hosting this thing, baby. I'm hosting, and it is going to be a good-ass time. And my job, unfortunately, will be to remain sober. Because this is for television. <laughs> what What is your read on the White House Correspondents' Dinner? You know, I've had Larry Wilmore on here. We talked about when he uh, had the White House Correspondents' Dinner with you know, Obama and trying to job jokes in front of the president himself. What do you feel about the White House Correspondents' Dinner, man? Is it is it a good time? Is it a bad time? I've never been. Um, I went last year with Trevor Noah, and I had a good time, but I also didn't have to be on stage. But this year, because I'm hosting that as well, and having to crack jokes in front of Joe Biden and Kamala, and you know, at a time when the country is pretty damn divided, um, I think it's an opportunity to use humor to unify, if I can do it the right way. But you know, it's a very delicate thing, and then also you have to be in tune with the news because the news is constantly changing. Um, you know, as we go on with like like. How can I put it? Like, the country could be in a good mood one day, and then the next day, like, like you know, like a couple of days ago, everybody was giggling about, oh, Twitter took my blue check mark. Right. I don't care about no blue check mark. Tee hee hee. Next day it could be a mass shooting. So, if we live in a world like that, tonally, my humor has to be something that touches those nerves. You know. 
Well, and the thing is, too, I mean, I, I totally get that. And, and, and the room is a different kind of room that you're normally in as a comedian. You got a bunch of media members. You got senators, congressmen, tastemakers in D.C. Um, and you got the president of the United States. Have, have you thought about being that close to the president and having to crack these jokes in front of him? Like, that was what Larry talked about with me. Or even I go back to Stephen Colbert when he had that brutal kind of roast of, of President Bush back in the day. Have you thought about how these jokes are going to land with the leader of the free world? No, I have not. <laughs> and the more I think about it, the less I feel like I need to think about it. Because my concern is that if I get up there and I start thinking about, well, will the president like this joke? Man, we're a nation of 300 million people. I'm up there. The comedians are for the people. We're not for the politicians. We're not for government. We are the chaos agents, and it's our job to just shine a little truth wherever people think that it needs to be shown. That's not a word, but you, you get what I'm saying. I feel like, you, man. It, I feel you. So it, I have to, you know, it could be a smooth gig or it could be a situation where I'm riding over potholes the entire time. Well, you know what? You're going to find out, but we're also going to find out a seat at the table goes down on the Grio Television Network. You can get it May 1st is where it's going to be streaming and all other platforms as well. Roy Wood Jr. joins us right now. Hey, man, you talked about Twitter a minute ago. Twitter's talking. Twitter wants Roy Wood Jr. as the permanent host of The Daily Show. Is that something that you'd be interested in? Twitter need to take over Comedy Central for me then, please. That's what y'all need to do. <laughs> That's what you want. Um, yeah, I would be interested in that. I, I think... To have an opportunity as a black American to have a microphone for four nights a week, that's not a small feat. And I think that's almost, too, in my opinion, it's almost a responsibility that you're called to versus aspiring to. So, you know, if I'm given that opportunity, I'm taking it. I don't know what I would do. I don't know how I would do it. I don't know who my team would be and all of that other jive, but in a, in a heartbeat, in a heartbeat, I would do it. Man, you know, I think that what we've seen you do on the show over the years, and obviously the guest hosting you've done, I think you'd be a great fit for it. I'm, I'm, I'm putting in the bid. You know, I don't know if my name carries any weight, uh, you know, but maybe. It does. It does. Well, I appreciate it, man. And H Town's behind you. Houston's behind you. We're talking to Roy Wood Jr. I want to say this, man. I went to the theater late last year to go see a movie called Confess Fletch that you were in. You played Sergeant oh. Monroe, Inspector Monroe, Slow Mo Monroe. Yeah. Uh, I've been a big Fletch fan my whole life, and I really loved the movie. It was, it was John Hanks and you played, if anybody read the book, you're the, the Inspector Flynn role, but as Inspector Monroe. Um, did you enjoy making that movie, man? Yeah, John Hamm was cool, man. Like, And that's the biggest thing I've ever done on film to date, you know. And mind you, I got to do Confess Fletch two weeks after doing Only Murders in the Building, and I had a scene with, with, um, with Steve Martin and uh, Martin Short. So to be able to be like straight up like, Oh, I get to work with y'all and then turn around and work with John Ham. Oh, thank you. I'll take that. <laughs> It was, and it was a good movie, man. Confess Flesh was really good. I enjoyed it. I saw Greg Matola, the director, go out and say that he's working on another script. Have you heard anything? Are we going to get a follow-up to Confess Fletch? Are we going to get two? I don't two? know, man. You know, in the Fletch series, is though, you know, Fletch is a traveler. He's a globetrotter. My character is a new father. <laughs> I can't be traveling the globe with Fletch. Monroe still got a wife we haven't met yet. <laughs> she doesn't let her husband just be all over the globe. Um, so, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, but I would love to, if they figure out any type of way to have me back in there, I'm happy to do it. I think with if, at worst case scenario, maybe they could give me one of those, um, one of those like Die Hard 2, Al Powell, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and let me call, let me call the character from another part of the country. Right. Just a little check in, just a little one off, yeah, one scene, little a little heat check. Just a little check in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the man from Family Matters. Yeah, man. <laughs> I would love that. We're talking to Roy Wood Jr. A seat at the table is going down May the 1st on the Grio Television Network. This is ESPN 975. I don't know. I have one time for one more question for you. Have you been following the NBA playoffs? Lightly. I what? watched a lot of the play-ins. I know Draymond apparently tried to do the cha-cha slide on somebody's chest. That's not allowed. <laughs> um... 
I know there's a lot of injuries. It seems like right now Brooklyn is the only team that's really dominating and in control right now. Well, yeah, I was going to ask you about Draymond. You know, I love his spirit. I love his energy. But you're right. You can't cha-cha slide or Cupid shuffle on a man's chest during the playoffs. Um, I mean, what, just what do you think of Draymond and what, what he kind of means to the NBA culture? He's passionate to a detriment. Wow. You know what? And you just summed that up easy. Passionate to a detriment. That's 100% right. And I think that he doesn't care. Because that playing style has gotten him four rings. So he's not going to change. The, you could still make the argument that, that Golden State should have five rings if Draymond doesn't miss that game against the Cavs in their series. You're right. For what was another ignorant-ass technical foul. So I, I just don't think it's good. i I tell you what I have liked, though. I like this Spencer. Um, was it Dinwiddie? Yeah. Jim Little um, talking trash to LeBron, said LeBron is old, <laughs> said I don't respect you till you put up 40. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. We need more of that WWE action in wrestling. Like, that's what we really need, bro. Like, you know, Draymond's wild, but I think there's a fine line where you could make this a little bit more of an entertainment product if they wanted to. And I don't think that would be a bad thing. I don't think it'd be a bad thing either, man. But you want to talk about entertainment? You got to check it out. May first, a seat at the table. Roy Wood Jr. joins us right now. I'll be se- sending the Trill Burgers to you. I appreciate you taking the time, man, and congrats on your success. And I'll be supporting you. Hey, thank you. Hurry up, tape running out.